All right, we want to look at finding the probability of outcomes when we roll a, a pair of fair dice and then sum up that total. Now, when we're looking at fair dice, what we basically mean is that every outcome, uh, the numbers 1 through 6, are going to be equal likely. So on a single die, what we have are the outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 with each one being equal likely. And again, that's coming from the word fair in the title here. So we're going to take two of these dice and roll them. Now to see what happens, um, when we add up the totals, we know the smallest total is going to be 1 plus 1 is 2. So I'm going to list out what's possible first, and then we'll try to figure out their probabilities. So the um, possible outcomes when we roll two dice. So again we said the smallest possible is 1 plus 1 is which is 2. And then we can roll one dice being a 1, the other dice being a 2, so we can get a 3 that way. And then there's lots of ways that we can get a 4. One could be a 1, the other one a 3. Both dices are 2's. And so if we continue this process we're going to see that the outcomes are the integers 2 all the way up to uh, the, the maximum possible for the sum is when both dice are a 6, which is 12. Now to assign probabilities to these outcomes, we have to be careful because the equal likely rule does not apply. And the reason for that is because there are a lot of ways that we can make, say, a 6 occur, but only one way to make 2 or 12 occur. And so if you've rolled any dice in the game, you know 2 and 12 don't occur that often as you're playing the numbers from 4 to 10 are, are really the ones that you're observing a lot of the time during the gameplay. So how do we figure out what their actual probabilities are? Well one way you could do this is you know run an experiment and observe their frequencies um, and then try to estimate the probabilities based on those observations. And another way says okay if you know each of the dice are fair I'm gonna say that I have a, a, a red die and a blue die. And so probably look better if I make that black. Alright, so if one dice is red and the other one is blue, any of the combinations possible with that red die and that blue die are going to be equal likely. And so how many of these are there? So it, I've got six choices for the red die and I have six choices for the blue die, the multiplication of this two tells me that there's 36 possible combinations of a red die and a blue die. So I want to figure out, out of those 36, how do I make each one of these uh, 11 outcomes and calculate the probabilities, those numbers from 2 to 12 when I sum it up. So there's, there's kind of a nice trick for this one. It says that, you know, when I start looking at these dice rolls, a red die and a blue die, if I consider the, uh, a pair of the outcomes, um, kind of like we would use for like ordered points, I could set up a nice list to actually find these probabilities. So I'm going to kind of create a table here where I say, you know, on the left hand side of that pair, that's the red dice. And on the right hand side, that's going to be the blue die. So the smallest outcome we know is when I roll a 1 and a red and a 1 and a blue, they add up to give me a total of 2. So I'm going to start off by writing this pair 1 comma 1. So red is a 1 and blue is a 1. When I add those together I get a sum of 2. Now the red die, what if it stays to be 1? What are the other possible outcomes? Well, the red die is 1, the blue could be a 2. Red die is 1, the blue could be 3. Red die is 1, blue could be 4. And we kind of continue out with this list until we have all the possibilities of the first dice, the red dice is a 1. What can happen is that the blue could be any of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now we can look at, okay, there's 6 of those 36 outcomes. I can do this for every possibility of the red dice, the red dice being a 2 then there's going to be another six possibilities of what the blue die could have been. 
And remember, we're going to be adding these totals together. Each one of these are equal likely to occur. So when we add the total, we can just count how many of those that we have, and then we can use our equal likely rule to find these probabilities based on the outcome of two dice being thrown. So I'm going to finish this table up here. So remember, we're starting with the red die is 2. The blue dice is going to be 1. And I'm going to kind of complete this out to see all 36. So here's the table completed of all 36 possible outcomes of those two dice. So now if I'm trying to calculate the probability of rolling, say, the 2, I need to count out how many ways that I can make the 2 out of the sum of the two digits out of 36 possible. So let's come down here and say, okay, I want the probability that the sum is 2. And for shorthand, I'm just going to write 2 inside the notation here for probability then, since we're talking about a sum. So there are 36 possible combination of the two dice being rolled. How many ways can these add up to being a 2? Well, here's a very nice pattern on this grid. Is that if I look at this diagonal, that diagonal shows me all the outcomes from rolling a 2. There is only one possibility both of those dice being 1, so I know the probability of the sum is 2 is 1 out of 36. What about the probability that the sum is 3? So the probability of 3. Well again, if I look at the diagonal of making 3, I roll a 1 and a 2, or a 2 and a 1. So this occurs only 2 out of the 36 times. What about the probability of 4? Does it continue to work in that pattern? And the answer is yes. Either I rolled a 1, then a 3, a 2, and a 2, or the 3 and a 1. And I have 3 of those, so we have 3 out of 36. And if I look at the probability of rolling a 5, again, I follow this diagonal where the sum is going to equal to 5. And we see that there are 4 outcomes here. So the probability of rolling a 5 is 4 out of 36. And if you continue, what's the probability of rolling a 6, a 7, an 8, a 9, a 10, the 11, and a 12? We can use this idea of counting along the diagonal to answer those. So to get a 6, I notice there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of these. So the probability of rolling a 6 is going to be 5 out of 36. The probability we roll a 7, we're on this main diagonal, we see that the 7 occurs most often, and there are 6 possibilities of those. So the probability of rolling a 7 is 6 out of 36. And if you look at the uh, pattern that's going to occur as we do 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, we're going to start repeating the probabilities from before along those diagonals. So the probability that we get, there we go, that we get an 8 is going to be 5 by 36, that we get a 9 is 4 by 36, a 10 is 3 by 36, and 11 is 2 by 36, and 12 is 1 by 36. So we have a way now to find the probability of a pair of fair dice and finding the probability of their uh, summed outcome by not using the equal likely rule on this piece, but by looking at the possible outcomes that made up these events of rolling a 2, rolling a 3 each of these 36 were, are considered to be equal likely to occur.